Welcome to our service to celebrate Pentecost. We hope to take you on a spiritual journey through the Bible, revealing the way that God, through the Holy Spirit, has spoken and continues to speak to humankind on our journey of life. We start our journey in Genesis with part of the creation story, which gives me a real sense of awe. But just before that, a couple of thoughts. It seems that our universe is gigantic and expanding and is about 14 billion years old, having a diameter of 23 trillion light years. The ancient Greeks and the Indian philosophers thought the Earth was at the centre of the universe, but now we know our sun is one of hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way, which is one of a few hundred billion galaxies in the universe. What an awesome creation. So let's start our journey. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering on the surface of the waters. I'm looking at the role of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Um, we're familiar with the idea of the Trinity. The Father is God and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think that's always the one that I struggle with a little bit to understand, um, kind of ghostly presence. Um, the whole idea of the Trinity is quite difficult to grasp. And I think the three parts are all one. But at the same time, they have separate jobs or separate purposes. Um, the Holy Spirit was with God, um, as David just read, in the creation. So right from the very beginning, he's part of God. And I think part of the nature of the Holy Spirit is bringing order out of chaos and also bringing rebirth and regeneration to God's people, to us. Um, my first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. The Holy Spirit was on Isaiah to comfort the brokenhearted and freedom and release. And I think that's the same spirit does the same things today through us. 
the Old Testament books were dealing with the time before Jesus's birth, and it was known as the Old Covenant. And the people needed a priest or a prophet who were anointed with the Holy Spirit to intercede on their behalf. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36, 26 and 27. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Ezekiel is telling people that God's spirit will move them to keep God's decrees and his laws and his rules. Um, and I think that can sometimes sound a bit, thou must do this and thou must not do that. But I actually think that God's rules and God's laws were given for us to live how God intended for us to live our very best lives and not just a list of do's and don'ts and things we shouldn't do. Um, that we can really be with God and be part of God. And that's the Holy Spirit in us enables us to be one with God. Um, in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike. And Joel is foretelling the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all believers. And I think it's the same spirit right back from before creation as we have available to us today, bringing order to our lives and regenerating us and allowing us direct access to God. The Holy Spirit is God in us, I believe.
My reading is from Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the first reading. is regarding the Holy Spirit coming to Mary to tell her that she'll, she has been chosen to bear the Son of God. We don't know how she felt. She may have felt elated. She may have felt overwhelmed because she had been the chosen one and frightened all at the same time. We don't know. When the angel came to her, she said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I don't know how Mary would have felt then. She knew she was a follower of God, obviously. And to think she'd be carrying the most holy one to be born in nine months time it was um, something of a frightening experience I should think in the way of uh, having the Holy Spirit overpower you knowing that you are the one to be chosen to do that my next reading is from Luke Chapter 3, verse 16, regarding John the Baptist. And he was a cousin of Christ, and he said to them, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And uh, he must have felt overwhelmed as well, thinking Jesus was coming to do all manner of things that he wasn't able to because he was the Holy One. And with the fire, it can make you feel overwhelmed when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, as well as feeling confident that when you have the Holy Spirit within you, you can do anything. Mm. But he felt as though he couldn't even untie Christ's sandals because he didn't feel worthy enough to. Mm. But uh, he was the one to tell people that that was happening.
my my reading comes from Luke, um, and this is a point at which the Holy Spirit descends onto Jesus, and Jesus is acknowledged as the Son of God. One day, when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. As he was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit, in bodily form, descended on him like a dove. And a voice from the heavens said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. The next reading after this is when Jesus is saying that the um, Holy Spirit will come to all of us. And this one comes from John. So on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowd, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. I love this one because it's a really beautiful image that the spirit has entered into Christ's heart and then the living water will pour out of him and we will also have that living water, that living spirit within us. Let your living water flow over my soul Let your Holy Spirit come and take control Of every situation that has troubled my mind All my cares and burdens unto you
These 11 poor men were not left by their master with a hard task and no help, for he bade them wait for the promised Holy Spirit. Promise and command here show how graciously Jesus considered their weaknesses. Not a word does he say of the task of witnessing until he has filled their hearts with the promise of the Spirit, the armour of power in which they were to be clothed. I'm going to read now from Acts chapter 1, verses 4, 5 and 8. Once he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptised with water, but in just a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Although Jesus had promised the disciples that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit, they must have felt, still felt very nervous as a small group of people meeting together, waiting. Especially the Jerusalem being filled with Jews from all over the region, celebrating Pentecost, which was an annual festival. What a time for God to choose to send his Holy Spirit and to give this quiet group of disciples, especially Peter, the courage and boldness to address the crowd. Luke tells us what happens. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked one another. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, 
what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptised and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. What an amazing experience to have been one of those. Um, and I think it just clearly shows that if we actually reach out to God, then each one of us could receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he will come very gently and just assure us of his presence. It's extraordinary listening to it mm. now, but already we were aware that um, what the events were. But to be there and not to be aware of what events were about to happen, be wondering, wow, they must have been stunned. Mm. Mm. And it mm. must have given Peter tremendous strength to go out and talk to the crowd mm. was well, only a few days since he's denied knowing Jesus at all and now he's proclaiming Jesus as everyone's saviour Father in heaven, source of all that is and shall be, thank you for your faithful, gracious, forgiving love. Hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us for our wrongdoings and help us to forgive those who do wrong against us. Help us to deal with temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. We thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. And we humbly open ourselves to you now and ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. 